Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to God. Well, good morning. Hello to every one of you. Uh, some of you are watching this morning as this, um, this teaching is being uh, recorded and broadcasted. Others uh, will be watching later this week. Uh, so whether it will be morning or afternoon or nighttime, I just want to say hello, hello, hello. Glory to God. And I want to thank you so much for listening to these teachings. And I believe that the Lord is uh, and will minister to you through these teachings. And I just want to spark uh, uh, that fire in you today, uh, that, um, that faith in you today. Glory to God. I want to strike that faith in your heart uh, so that you are stirred up, so that you are encouraged, and so that you are learning more about the kingdom of God and how God works. Glory to God. And more importantly, how he's working now in this day, in this hour, and in this season. Glory to God. So uh, last month, month and also this month, we've been talking about position, purpose, and power. In other words, God is shifting his people into position and alignment according to his kingdom purposes. But not only that, glory to God, but that he's releasing uh, anointings and uh, his power, uh, greater degrees or greater dimensions of the anointing. So I want you to set your heart um, and, and, and your mind and or just turn your attention, attention to what the Lord um, is saying this morning through this broadcast. And I believe that the Lord is going to encourage your hearts today. Glory to God. So let's pray. And we're going to get right into the message today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for the words uh, that you speak to our hearts and how you minister to us and encourage us, Father, that even when things around us look really shady and rocky, but Lord, we thank you uh, that there's nothing shady or rocky about you. You are always on top of things. You are always aware of our situations and circumstances, and you always have a plan for our victory and triumph, glory to God, you always have a plan to take that which we are experiencing and turn it around and cause it to work together for our good. So we set our hearts um, uh, before you. Lord, we come to you with our hearts tender towards you, uh, with our cups uh, out so that you can fill them up, Lord. We say, speak, Lord, into our hearts. Speak to us today, glory to God, uh, so that we can hear what you're saying, what you want to do, and set ourselves in agreement with you. Thank you so much, Lord, for the word of God, how it is anointed, glory to God, how it will do what you are sending it out to do. We give you all the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so as we are talking um, more about um, the uh, our, our position, our purpose, and, and the power of God being released through uh, the body of Christ today, uh, we're going to talk about moving in greater dimensions of the anointing. So last week, we just touched on a few things about moving in the anointing and just reminding everyone who are listening uh, that we have an anointing from the Holy One, and that anointing helps us to discern between good and evil, helps us to have a keen ear to what the Lord is saying, what the Spirit of God is saying. And so just uh, want to remind you that we said that hearing the voice of God, hearing and following what God is saying is one of the primary keys to moving in the anointing and even and especially in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. If you will listen to every person uh, that walks in greater dimensions of the anointing, it's because even whether, whether they're preaching or teaching, whether they're ministering to others or releasing miracles and signs and wonders, it comes from first hearing what God is saying. The Holy Spirit directs. He gives words of wisdom. He gives words of knowledge. He gives instructions. And he will show us, he will show us clips of what he wants to do. And so, but it all has to do with that hearing glory to God, uh, what the spirit of God is saying. He may speak to our hearts, you know, to go and lay hands on someone and pray for them because he wants to release his power. 
glory to God, but it's hearing, glory to God, and obeying God, and even being willing to step out, glory to God, in faith at the word of the Lord, that we're able to release his power, glory to God. So today, we're going to talk about moving into greater dimensions of the anointing, and so we're going to focus a little bit more on not just us hearing and moving on an individual basis, but that corporate anointing, that how that God sometimes releases a corporate anointing, a greater degree of the anointing where everyone present receives of God, where the glory of God falls and where we may be in a house of the Lord. We may be worshiping together, you know, and when we all come into sync and we're worshiping together, how the presence of God will, will fall and be manifested in a greater capacity than on an individual basis. Well, it is the same way. Um, you know, just uh, when the word of God is going forth and we're believing for those miracles and signs and wonders in the midst where people are able to receive healings and deliverances and victory in our midst without someone individually laying hands on them. In other words, there's not pouring of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So we're going to talk about that some today and I'm going to start with a scripture and it is in Matthew chapter 12. And, uh, um, I'm going to read all the way verses 22 uh, through uh, 30. Glory to God, because this is important that you, you understand this whole passage and what was really going on. Glory to God. And, and one of the strategies of the enemy to keep us from moving in the anointing. So Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 says, then what was brought to him, Jesus, who was de demon possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? He, was, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Now, I want to just bring out some key points in this passage. One, um, uh, this, this thing was done before multitudes. There were multitudes present when Jesus released the power of God. And when what happens is when, when we see um, uh, 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 that the power of God moving, and even if it's in the midst even if in the midst and God heals one person, it sparks faith in others that, that throughout the congregation, people will, that faith will be ignited and people will begin to believe. And, and, and so there's a greater capacity for miracles and signs and wonders. I went to a conference years ago and uh, it was a conference given by Marilyn Hickey. And one of the things that uh, that she uh, had us do is that to come up and share a testimony and then believe for others to receive. And one of the things that God has showed her was that when people see or hear of testimonies of others, it helps them to believe that God would do that for them. But now Jesus was in this setting. And, but we see the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, they were tools of the enemy because that's just how the devil works. You know, he accuses. And so they accused him of casting out devils by Beelzebub. But Jesus used that as an opportunity to teach a kingdom principle. And what he said, now, if we understand what he's saying, is that he said, every kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand. So the point that I want to make to you today is that the kingdom of God is not divided. So if we're wanting to see a greater degree of the anointing, and that's whether or not it's in our family or whether it's not in, 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 a, in, a, in a church or in a group setting, you know, there must be unity. 
There cannot be divisions. If there's a division, if there's divided mindsets and thinkings, we won't see the dimension of the anointing that we could see. And so, so this is important. Now, I want to read a few other passages along these lines. And um, <clears throat> one is Ephesians 4, verse 4, verses 4 and 5. It says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and, and in you all. Now, right after that passage in Ephesians, where he started talking about this oneness, he started talking about the grace gifts. And he was saying that God has given to every one of us the grace according to his purposes, you know? And so now before uh, our gifts can are really activated, to the degree that we are, we become a, a, a united people and these gifts. Now, what we're talking, what I'm talking about is when we are combining these gifts, hallelujah, so that we function as one. Before that, the apostle Paul reminded the people that there is one spirit, glory to God. The kingdom of God is not divided. And so that oneness is one of the keys uh, to a demonstration of the power of God to a greater degree than we've ever seen before. Now, remember that when the Lord Jesus, uh, on the day, before the day of Pentecost, as they were approaching the day of Pentecost, that Jesus instructed them to, to stay in Jerusalem and to pray, you know, and to wait. But the scripture says that they were on one accord. Glory to God. They were united. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit made his entrance. Glory to God. And every person that was present was affected. The Holy Spirit began to empower them all. And he sat upon each of them. Glory to God. So now I want to just drive this point in home today about the unity, glory to God, that is necessary if we're going to see greater dimensions of the glory of God and his power. Now I want to read uh, some scriptures in Corinthians and I'm going to just read, uh, highlight some scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talking about the same thing. Now, the apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth says, verse 4, 1 Corinthians 12 and 4 says, there are diversities, various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. These are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. And skip down to verse 12. He says, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. Let's skip down to another one. Verse 18 says, but now God had set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Glory to God. The last portion, uh, past scripture passes in 1 Corinthians 12, I'm going to read, is 20, verses 27 and 28. And he says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. And so then he goes on to say, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of ministry, of miracles, you know? So he goes on and he talks about that divert, the unity that is brought about in diversity, in understanding the different gifts. Now, we, we see position, as the Apostle Paul said, all apostles, pastors. We see position, but what God sees are anointings. <laughs> so these, when God set gifts in, in the church, you know, we, we see people, you know, but God sees gifts and he sees anointings. And this is what I believe that the kingdom of God is so strategic, glory to God, that when God sets these gifts in the church, these are special anointings. You know that the anointings, the enemy cannot, uh, he cannot uh, 
uh, um, defeat the anointing. There's no gift. There's no nothing that he has. No spirit of witchcraft. Uh, no spirit of Python. No, there's nothing that he has that can stand up against the anointing in us. <laughs> oh my goodness. So he hates that. He hates that anointing. And the only thing that, that one of the primary things that he tries to do to intercept, interfere with that anointing is to cause strife and divisions and the myth, myths of forgiveness, those things that, 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 um, that, that can throw us out of love or to keep out or, order. Or to move us back over into that selfishness, you know, so, but no, our faith works by love. And when we get in position, there's something about where God positions us. It is generally a place where love can work. Glory to God. In other words, he strikes within our hearts a love for those that he has called us to reach. Secondly, it's generally a place where the spirit of faith can work and, and, it, and that's not that fear. And so he'll place us in a, in a position, glory to God, where our faith can work and where love can work. And that's a release of the anointing of Jesus Christ. And so I've seen this thing over and over and over again. Even a person who's fearful of a lot of things, when God places you in where he, when he positions you, there's going to be a love emerge in you for that particular people that stirs up that compassion in you. And you're able to, to deny yourself, glory to God, and say, but these are hurting. You know, if you are a person who has have a children's ministry, you may have not really had good relationships uh, as, as far as adults are concerned. But when God places you in the midst of children, all that fear goes. And all you can think about is the children, what they need. And you, you put yourself on a back burner and you start praying for those children and you start making sacrifices for those children. Why? Because that's the force of the love of God. Your heart has connected with the heart of God for those children. Glory to God. That's the way the anointing works. So when you see a person in a position and they're, they're consumed by fear, that's an indication that they have not really stepped over into that right position. They may be on their way there, but they haven't really stepped over into that right position because there is a force of love that works in us when we are placed in the right position with God. And that love strikes faith in our heart. But now if we're out of position, you know, we, we, we're going to be thinking about ourselves and, you know, how, you know, we, how we look in the eyes of others and things like that. But no, when God gets us in the right position, that fear will have to leave because the force of the love of God and the force of faith will overshadow the force of fear. Glory to God. And that's when the anointing really works. Glory to God. And so now when we're our leaders, uh, whether it's a pastor or whether it's a group that God has placed us over, hallelujah, one of the best things that we can do as we're helping people is begin to see the gifts in them, see the anointing, see an anointing. If you can see an anointing in a person and you can uh, help that person rise up in the area of their anointing, glory to God, it's going to shift that person, glory to God. That person is going to shift. They're going to move out of that selfishness. They're going to move out of, of thinking about themselves and they're going to begin to think about the good of someone else. Glory to God. Love is what causes us uh, to be able to function in the, with the, in the degree of faith, Lord God, that God put in us. Glory to God. One of the saddest things that I have experienced as I've gone, when I would go to a prayer meeting sometimes, is, is to see that leader pouring his heart out, or pouring her heart out you know, for the people, believing God for the people. But when others are there, they're only thinking about their own individual ministries. That's not a unity. Uh-uh. That's not a unity. It lets me know that there still needs to be some work done, glory to God, in the individuals, glory to God, so that they can understand that they are a part of that work. Oh, God. But that's the Holy Spirit work. That lets me know. There's, you know, sometimes when I walk in, in her, in it, you know, since I've just been, um, uh, just God has released me into the, the apostolic grace. And sometimes when I walk in a, in a place, I, I can just sense what's happening in that place or what God wants to do in that place. You know, I may walk in a place and the Lord will show me. He, there was once he showed me just like 
just like popcorn, various ones that were called to intercede for that work. See, God has people that he has called to intercede. When they step over into that intercessory prayer aspect, it's going to ignite something in them. See, no pastor, no apostle or leader has all the gifts, whereas they don't need others. No, if you're going to activate a corporate anointing, that people are going to have to rise up in the specific graces and anointings that are upon their lives. God did it in the Old Testament, did it in the New Testament. Moses was trying to do uh, all the counseling himself, but God sent his father-in-law in his life and said, Moses, the thing that you are doing is not good. You will wear yourself out. You will die early, and, and then the people will be left without you. You know, so what his wisdom for him was, you choose others, and God will anoint them with the same spirit that is on you. See, there are impartations, glory to God. And this is why when, 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 they, when they, uh, they became uh, leaders, uh, uh, when he, he appointed them as leaders, that anointing came upon them to be able to help counsel. That is the way it is. There are anointings that are connected with the leaders that you serve, because when you serve with a right heart, you begin to be a partaker of the grace of God that is upon that leader, you know? But then sometimes if you go off by yourself, you may not experience the same degree of that anointing. Why? Because we are one, glory to God. And the body of Christ is one. And God places us, glory to God, uh, uh, and, and, and connects us uh, with these anointings. So we'll talk, sometimes we just think, we're connected with people, but but God's what God is looking beyond that to see the anointing upon that person that you are connected with because you may need that anointing. That's the way He did in the Old Testament when He anointed people. He did it through the priests. You know, He could have come down and anointed them Himself. He could, but He did it through priests. Hallelujah, glory to God. The priests were the ones who anointed people for the service of the Lord in the New Testament. We have one king, priest, glory to God, and he has given anointings. Hallelujah. He said, I am entrusted by anointings. I am the king, priest, but I've given unto you apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And these, they are carriers of my anointing. And when they lay hands on you, there will be an impartation. But you've got to be in the place where I set you. Hallelujah. Every person's anointing is not for you. That's why it's important to get in the place where God has called you. He said I, that God has set gifts in the church. So when God leads you to a particular work, he's not just considering how people love you. He's not just considering how, uh, how good they teach or preach. No, he's considering the anointings that's upon that person because sometimes you sit there or you're in, impressed to be connect with the person because you need that anointing working in your life that is upon them. And it's a stirring and it's an activating nation. The apostle Paul told the church uh, at Philippi, you know, they were partners with him. They were connected with him. He says, you all are partakers of my grace. What he was saying was the apostolic grace that is upon me is upon you because you are my partners because you support me. You pray for me. I pray for you. He was saying, there's a divine connection between us. Glory to God. And this grace is upon me. Hallelujah. This grace is also upon you. You are connected with me. You are partakers of my grace. Hallelujah. So when we understand the way, the grace of God, there are no big eyes and little use in the body of Christ. We see position. God sees special graces. He sees anointings that he has trust entrusted. There are corporate anointings. There are family anointings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you may be born in a certain family, but if you focus on the negative things that happen to you, you will miss the anointing. Glory to God. That's upon that family. Hallelujah. There are families who are specifically gifted and talented in music and, and arts and entertainment. And you'll see that anointing upon them to sing, uh, to praise and worship, to dance. And so, and God, even in marriages, I believe, that he impart that there these there are anointings combined anointings <laughs> yeah. glory to god so the corporate anointings upon the family my family was a family of priests that are many preachers glory to god in our family you know my mom 
and dad had nine children. But out of the nine children, pretty much most all of us are called to preach the gospel. There's also an anointing. My dad was a teacher of the word. My mother was an intercessor. These anointings are upon the children and the grandchildren. There's, there was this, the grace upon them to sing in, 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 that, in that area of arts and entertainment. Uh, that they, they are singers in there, but these are sometimes family anointings. And what happens when we give our lives to the Lord, then we are able to stir up and activate these anointings that were upon the family. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Especially if that, that father or grandfather or someone in that family served the Lord. There are also families that the enemy has, has had a foothold in their lives. And there are not a lot of people who know the Lord Jesus Christ who have or who have tapped into that family anointing. But when uh, God sometimes will single out one member of that family and he will call that person to preach or to teach, he will call that person in fellowship with him. And they then begin will tap into that anointing. However, glory to God, they may have a battle because the devil has had a foothold so long in your family, he doesn't want to give up his ground. But I believe that when God calls you out, hallelujah, he is ready to release that anointing upon you and all of the generations that come behind you, glory to God. That's how powerful this anointing is, glory to God. And so when we connect with Jesus, glory to God, we are connected with the anointed one, but he has given gifts. Hallelujah. He has given graces. He has given anointings. The apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, stir yourself up. And he was saying, he talked about the uh, gifts that was imparted unto him. He said there were gifts at your ordination that was imparted to you. Oh, my, my, my. These anointings can be imparted. Now we know the enemy also tries to impart evil spirits. But when you are of the Lord, when you are serving the Lord, glory to God, he wants us to know and understand that we are his anointed ones and we have an anointed glory to God from the Holy One, hallelujah. And we are connected with anointings, hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's why it's important, glory to God, to plug in wherever God has placed you. Glory to God. And now there are apostolic anointings. And one of the things that the apostle does is see the gifts, glory to God, hallelujah. And they awaken, help awaken the gifts in others. The apostle and the prophet have awakened the gifts and release people into their divine destinies, glory to God. So they don't try to hold everybody in the church doing the same thing. No, they're able to see the gifts and they're able to see the value to the body of Christ. And they're able to help awaken these gifts and stir them up and release them into these gifts where they can bear more fruit. Glory to God. The Apostle Paul told the people, he says, I have watered, you know, I have planted, Apollos has watered, but God gave the increase. He says, is Christ divided? No, he is not divided. What's the devil trying to stop? He's trying to stop corporate anointings because he knows that when the corporate anointings show up in your midst, oh, he has had it. Souls are going to come into the body of Christ. Glory to God. The evangelism, the spirit of evangelism is going to be working. The prophetic grace to help begin to call people uh, uh, back out, up, out of sin and, and help them to overcome uh, sin and bondages and things that have held them. These anointed, the teacher, when the teacher is in place, glory to God, that, that, that spirit of error cannot work in the midst like it's supposed to, glory to, like, like the enemy has purposed it to. That spirit of the, the teacher anointing will expose the spirit of error and doctrines of demons, glory to God, so people can hear and know the truth and the truth will make them free, glory to God. So this, this if we're gonna move into greater dimensions of the anointing and the glory, we're gonna have to first deal with things that separate and divide us. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we have to understand that there's no need for anyone to be jealous of others because we all have an anointing from the Holy One if we are born again. Glory to God. And God wants us to walk in that anointing. Hallelujah. I'm stirred up again. Hallelujah. I am so glad. Hallelujah. That God has given me people. Hallelujah. That we walk together. Hallelujah. Glory to God as one. 
And God wants to do the same thing for you. He wants to show you your place. He wants to show you those that he has called along beside you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because together, hallelujah, we release and manifest the power of God in the area, areas or regions or nations that we are called to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to thank you so much for listening. Our time is up. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for those that have been listening to me. Thank you for a new stirring on the inside of them, uh, of that anointing on the inside of them. I thank you for revelation knowledge coming forth, God. Thank you, Lord, for enabling them and empowering them to release your supernatural power wherever they are. Father, I give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you again for listening. Hallelujah. If this message has been a blessing to you, share it with someone else so that it can bless them as well. God bless you. Enjoy your day today.